Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This is Cassidy Campbell with the North Central Texas Council of Governments. And before we get started, I would like to take a moment to introduce the United States Postal Service representatives we have here with us today. We have Tom Bloom, Managing Counsel of the Southern Law Office, Deborah Wilson, Manager of Address Management, Fort Worth District, Jerry Pento, Operations Program Analyst with the Dallas District, and Jennifer Kucher, Operations Program Analyst, Southern Area Office. Good morning, this is Tom Bloom. We really appreciate uh, the opportunity to come and speak with you today about the, the uh, issue of central delivery. And I'd like to thank on behalf of Area Vice President Sean Mossman and the District Managers of Fort Worth and Dallas, the opportunity extended by the North Central Texas Council of Governments. Uh, so thank you very much. What our, what our goal today is, is we're trying to um, set up a, a situation where we partner with each of you, each municipality and each county in moving all residential mail delivery to central mail delivery. That's the mode that we're now, the Postal Service, both by regulation and statute that we're in policy that we're moving to. Uh, and we've been working with the Dallas Builders Association. We had presentations that we made into the volume group back in September and October. We've also been working with Congressman Sam Johnson's office, Congressman John Ratcliffe's office, and Congressman Michael Burgess's office whenever we've had situations develop where there were questions regarding ongoing uh, construction. So right now, I'd just kind of like to t do a little bit of introduction to give you some context of basically what we are as an agency and what we're trying to deal with and uh, how you can help us to get in the right sequence with the developers and builders and having these mode of delivery approved by the Postal Service before they approve, you approve, their master plans and plats for development. And as a little bit of background for the Postal Service, we currently deliver to more than 156 million delivery points every year in the United States. And the 154 billion pieces of mail that we deliver annually account for 47% of the world's mail. The cost of the network continues to grow as the country adds more than a million new delivery addresses every year. And I think all of you appreciate the massive growth we have. Uh, I think Dallas, Fort Worth area probably has the greatest growth nationally, even more so than California and probably even not strip in southern Florida where we have a lot of activity. But the reality is that the total mail volume because of the 2008 economic crisis, our first class mail volume, which is our big money earner, that's gone from 213 billion pieces delivered in 2006 down to 154 billion pieces last year. So the reality we face in maintaining this massive delivery network with over with a quarter million vehicles out there and 640,000 people, we're delivering less mail to more addresses every year. So management, what have we done? Since 2008, management has taken $14 billion out of cost, cost cutting and right size in our organization. We closed approximately 50% of our plants. We've reduced retail hours, all try to save $14 billion. But we've decided and determined at the national level and the area and districts that central delivery is a key component to meeting our obligation to the American public and to provide them with efficient, secure mail delivery within the budget that's funded exclusively by the sales stamps and other postal products. And, and that's, therein lies the tension for us is we have strict specific uh, statutory limits on what we can increase our prices, both in competitive and non-competitive prices. We rely on no taxpayer money whatsoever. So we have to maintain the network, provide you with, in the American public with you know, the expected service that you're entitled to and do that within budget. Just to give you an idea on what's happened the first quarter of 2017, the first class mail revenues declined by $568 million just in the first uh, quarter of this year. That's a 7.5% decrease in mail volume over 16 as far as uh, our revenue. The shipping, however, the shipping and packages business experienced revenue growth of $701 million or 14.7% over the same quarter in FY16. So the clear, the clear indication here is this. While our mail volume in first class letters and that has significantly dropped because of Amazon and all the online, I'm sure you're all familiar with the articles you see in the paper, with a huge increase in package volume being delivered to homes. Our package volume is way, way up from what it used to be. And so as a result of that, we're moving in part to central delivery in order to provide our customers 
with a safe, secure place to keep their mail. And we've had this uh, ongoing pretty much. Central Delivery has been really a big thing, part of our delivery system in California for at least 20 years, Colorado for the last 10 or 15. And I've been personally involved in South Florida with major uh, developments, 15, 16, 1700 homes with Toll Brothers, WCI, Cal Atlantic, Stanpak, and some of the biggest builders. So now what we're trying to do in Dallas, Fort Worth, is work with you to get the message out to the developers and builders that these approvals for mode of delivery need to happen before the master plat and plans are put into place. And just to show you uh, where this change came about, it really came about back in uh, 2011 when the Postal Service published uh, updates of its regulations. And the revision in the regulations provides the Postal Service with the autonomy in determining the modes of delivery when adding new deliveries. That enables the Postal Service to provide service adequate and necessary to meet its basic function in the efficient manner. That's the regulatory mandate. Now, it also places a responsibility on the Postal Service that our representatives, which are here today in the room, that we meet with builders and developers early in the process to ensure the best choices are made and access uh, for the mode of deliveries is to be put into place in the proper time. So there's, there's, two, there's two parts to this. The first part is, what do we do with the current inventory that's out there or projects that are underway? And what do we do in the future? So we're asking you today that as we move forward into the future to please ask the developers and builders that come to you with master plats and plans whether they've submitted them to the Postal Service and whether they've submitted a request to us just like they do for gas, water, electric, and fiber optic for approval of mode of delivery. Because what central delivery requires, as you can imagine these developments are, they have to be able to set aside uh, specific dedicate common areas to put these kiosks in to have the, the, you know, the centralized delivery. They have to make allowances for parking. They also have to make allowances to comply with the different regulations and statutes that apply for access for the disabled as well as the fair housing standards which also has some of the disability regulations. Now, what we're doing as far as what happens when there's a project already underway in your communities is we work on those on an individual basis. And sometimes what happens is phases, like phase one may already be, there might be five phases to a major development. Phase one already has curbside approved. So phase two will work with the developer. That might be two to a post. But then in phase three, four, and five, they, they make way for central delivery. So we've recently met with the Pulte builders and some of the other local major builders to, um, to be able to implement this in the process. So we've had success at doing that with both the current projects. Um, but right now, in addition to the regulations I just mentioned, it went into effect back in April 5th of 2012. We just recently introduced a new bill called the Post Office Operation uh, Bill of, of uh, 2017. And what we're trying to do in this new bill is the bill provides for new delivery point establishment after the date of the enactment of the Postal Service Reform Act of 2017. The Postal Service shall provide a primary mode of delivery other than door delivery with a preference for secure centralized delivery. So what I want to share with you today is that what already exists in the postal regulations in the POM, the Post Office Operational Manual, which by the way is available on a blue page to all of you and to the builders and developers. But the, the new bill that we just put into Congress last week, which the Postmaster General uh, testified about on February 7th of 2017, that this new bill, the Reform Act of 2017, has the same basic language in as the regulations and establishes central delivery as the mode of delivery for the U.S. Postal Service moving forward. So. At this point, I'm going to ask uh, Deborah Wilson to go over the particulars. That's kind of the policy where we're at with the law and what our goal is uh, during this, this broadcast, this telecom with you. Okay. <coughs> All right. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Tom has covered or uh, gone over the policy, the national policy, under which every postal district must operate. So I'm basically going to just take you through some of the local procedure. Uh, I'm from the Fort Worth District and I'm going to be um, going over our basic policy. Um, and just please understand that each district may have slight changes in their policy based on availability of personnel, but we all basically work on this under the same policy.
So some of you are wondering why the shift to centralized delivery versus curbside delivery. Okay, the Postal Service has determined that centralized delivery actually affords better service for all stakeholders. Centralized receptacle locations provide greater protection against mail theft. There are more, uh, it provides more security for the customers. And it also um, allows for more timely and accurate deliveries by our carriers. The fewer stops that a carrier has to make on a route means more timely delivery service to the customer. The centralized parcel, uh, centralized locations also provide more parcel locker space for a customer's uh, packages to be stored under lock and key. Those are just some of the benefits of centralized delivery. Within the centralized uh, receptacles, there are outgoing mail slots where the customer's uh, mail can be stored uh, in a more safe location while they're waiting for a collection, more secure uh, coverage. And it also reduces the need for our old blue collection boxes for the customer. And today, you have many more options for um, centralized boxes, a lot more variety in the styles and the sizes of the boxes, more parcel storage space. And these are just some of the examples. The Postal Service did a, a cost study comparison to determine the benefit of moving to centralized um, delivery service. Centralized delivery service provides a tremendous savings to all stakeholders as well. There's more than a $74 savings per centralized delivery versus curbside delivery. There's more than a $225 savings utilizing centralized delivery locations versus door, the old historical door-to-door -door delivery. Yeah, this is Tom again. I just wanted to say, as a practical matter, kind of put that in perspective. We had a place down in Florida called Valencia Cove. It had 823 deliveries to it, single-family homes. And so in a place like that, a carrier can only, with packages, be expected to carry maybe 640 of those addresses. So if that's going to be a curbside delivery for 823 homes in a subdivision, then that's going to require us to put a carrier and a half out there. So when you add the wages, the benefits, the cost of the truck, the gas, it's going to cost us roughly $100,000 a year to provide delivery, curbside delivery. We instead built a really nice pavilion there with a roof over it. It was quite stylish looking for all the mail deliveries. One central point in the place for 823 deliveries. It's going to cost us roughly about $40,000 a year to, de to provide delivery there. So that's a cost savings of $60,000 of postal service annually. And it really went over, goes over well in these new subdivisions because unlike existing places, when these are planned out by the developers, one, they make the pavilions, you know, usually in the entrance, and it's, they're very really stylish down in Florida. And uh, when you go into them, it's usually they put them by, they have like the golf course, the clubhouse, the, te the pool, the, the tennis courts, and usually right up in there somewhere by the main clubhouse, they erect these central delivery units. And the, the customers have said they really like them because what they end up doing is when they're out of town a lot of times, they don't have to ask neighbors to watch their mail or, or worry about packages put on their doorsteps to get the daily thunderstorms in Florida and get ruined or be stolen. You know, they're in secure lock facilities and along with their mail is also locked up. So the, the residents down are really like it. So once folks have opportunity to, you know, to have this service available, they've really embraced it. Thank you, Tom. And as he's, as he's just gone over for you the tremendous savings in cost, um, this slide is just an example of the savings, over $4,700 savings in cost for a builder utilizing uh, 16, a 16-door 16 CBU versus purchasing a 16 curbside boxes. Tom has also addressed 
uh, vehicle availability and the types of vehicle that the Postal Service uses. And we are currently working on what's, what we call the next generation of vehicles. We're beginning to utilize vehicles that uh, are more geared toward centralized delivery and they can accommodate a larger package volume service. They're more ideally central, uh, used for centralized delivery settings. <clears throat> Okay, now centralized delivery procedure for the Fort Worth district. In order for us to meet the growing demands and service requirements that are that's been created by a larger package volume, uh, less letter mail volume today, and the tremendous growth that's in our area, then the postal service and your local postmasters absolutely have to consider. Uh, utilizing centralized delivery before any other mode of delivery. And the shift to centralized delivery does cover all delivery route types, city delivery, rural delivery, and highway contract delivery service. Now, what's going to be needed to make this process work more smoothly for everyone? and for all stakeholders is that our local postmasters and management, local management is going to become much more active with the community. There needs to be much more community interaction. Uh, local management will, will be contacting your local uh, city municipalities and we need for you to invite them out to your zoning and planning meetings, your monthly meetings so that they can begin to review uh, pre preliminary plans for new developments and the mode of deliveries that are, need, that are going to be, need to be established within those potential new developments. They need to review preliminary addressing and development of for potential addressing formatting issues um, and the plans for centralized delivery application at those sites. Mm -hmm. yeah, this, this is Tom again. You know, traditionally uh, in lower growth areas, the postmasters have had the independence to make these decisions on mode of delivery. But due to the explosive growth and the national change over to central delivery and the need to have a uniform, consistent application of policy, ensure that everybody's treated fairly, equally, and it, when we're uniform in what we're doing, we're moving over. These decisions, while the postmasters, you know, the face of the postal service in the community would love to, you know, needs to come to your meetings and, and interact with you and the builders and developers, these decisions are ultimately made on, on granting uh, mode of delivery is made by the district staff in both Dallas and Fort Worth district. And the Postal Service is working on uh, publishing a growth and delivery point management program. And within that program, when a decision is made about the mode of delivery, for example, if there's an ongoing development and there's, you know, the Postal Service makes a decision and it's the, the builder developer has a dispute with that, they'll be able to appeal uh, the first level appeal that they can make to the district manager, him, him or herself. And then the second level appeal will actually be to the area manager for delivery program support. And then there'll be a third and final level of appeal will actually be to the area vice president here in the southern area. So we're trying to set up a process that meets everybody's needs. And when you know, whenever two minds can't agree on something, we do have a, a process and other folks within our agency uh, get, having an opportunity to come and make presentations and go up the line of authority uh, to reach a final resolution. And so far for, you know, in Dallas, Fort Worth, like I said, we had a series of issues come up on existing inventory, developments were already underway between last summer and you know, through Christmas, and we were able to work with the various congressmen's offices, the developers and builders, and, and with a lot of help from the Dallas Builders Association to reach a consensus on how you know those, those issues would be worked out. It's, it's worked out great every time. And as Tom stated before, all of this discussion needs to take place at, or begin taking place in the initial stages of the, the development process. So as we said, we need you to invite your local postmasters and station managers to your weekly or monthly uh, zoning meetings. And we need to make sure that all plans for new development and growth in your area is forwarded to your local postmaster as soon as possible. 
along with any preliminary mapping locations or layout that you can provide, that would be very helpful. Um, we need you to make sure that you provide your final plat and maps to, uh, for the new subdivisions or new phases within a subdivision or NDCBU box diagrams for apartments and business complexes to your local postmaster as soon as possible. We also would like to ask you to make, to, to help us to make sure that when there are any changes made um, in the, within the preliminary plans, such as a change in builders within the development, that you help the Postal Service to make sure that new builders or new project managers and homeowners associations, et cetera, are provided with the, with the approved mode of delivery agreement information before they begin to build. That's one of the things that Tom was just speaking about. And he also just covered that um, we need that we need for builders and developers to understand that the approval for a particular mode of delivery in existing development and or partially completed phases of a development in some locations does not necessarily establish the same mode of delivery for new developments or phases of a planned project under that developer or builder within the area or in a neighboring city. Um, each request for an exception to centralized delivery today must be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis and it must be pushed up the level of chain of command for approval from upper management before your local post office is able to proceed with providing a different mode of delivery. So that's in summary um, the policy and the procedure that each district follows. So what we're asking you all to consider, for businesses especially, consider converting your your old historical mode of delivery, curbside delivery, possibly door-to-door, -to, -door, to centralized delivery as demonstrated in this slide. Can you convert from curbside delivery or door-to-door -door delivery and improve your operations? Can you improve your customer service? Now in these next few slides, these are just some planning options for builders and developers to consider because I think also that from the feedback that we've been getting in our office, some of the concern for developers and builders is in um, curb appeal. They're uh, wanting to move away from the old gray style centralized boxes. And today, you do have many more options. So these next slides are just um, some planning options for you to give you some of the possible setups that you can provide for your community. It does not have to be uh, unpleasing to the eye. Today, you have many more centralized box styles to choose from, and many more options for setting them up. All we need is for you to work with your local post office branches and allow them to determine the safest location for those boxes to be set up, and the size of the boxes, things of that nature. We want the areas to be safe for the customer and for the carriers to deliver the mail to you. And things of that nature. So again, these next few slides are just showing you some of the options that are available to you out there. And there are a number of different vendors that are approved, USPS approved, for you to purchase your boxes from. The 
these, again, are just some of the many different variations that you can consider. And I just want to remind you again that there will be occasions where centralized delivery might not be the best setup, but just remember that any exceptions to centralized delivery will have to go to the next level of upper level management for review and approval. And I'd also like to remind you, the fewer stops that a carrier has to make, the more timely your delivery service. Tom, did you have something else you wanted to say before I? Yes. Um, one, so that in, in kind of in summary, what we're really looking for is, is to partner up with you. You know, we're, we've been out of sequence to some point in some areas with some of the developments, you know, getting the message out. And not all the builders, it became clear from our time at the meeting with builders and developers at the Dallas Builders Association, they weren't aware of these regulations. They weren't aware of the processes. And trying to implement this, you know, three quarters of the way through a project or halfway, you know, we have to take a look at each one of them to decide what we can work out. And like I said, we've worked everything out with the builders and developers. But we really want to be in the proper sequencing. And the proper sequencing to do this properly is kind of just like the, the gas and water company, electric company, the fiber optics, the postal service needs to you know be aware of these developers these master plats and plans when they come in and prior to them being approved by the municipalities and county and zoning authorities for development they need to have their mail mode of delivery mail agreement already done and we sign a formal agreement with the builders and developers whenever we meet with them so we're available you know at any time in dallas and fort worth anywhere to, to come out and make presentations to your, your municipality your county your group we're available to meet with any builders and developers at any times on these issues. And, and really, at the end of the day, we just want to make sure that, you know, we're given cutting edge delivery, we're given timely delivery, we're given safe and secure delivery to the, to the American public and to all of you in Dallas, Fort Worth. And we know this is a real challenge for you and for us because the area is just growing so fast. We're adding, new, we're adding you know, thousands of deliveries in Dallas, Fort Worth every year, more and more trucks and carriers. So it's just very important that this process you know, that, that we get where we need to be, and, and we really depend on you to really help us, and, and we really appreciate your assistance. Now, these, this next information is, this is the group of Dallas District Growth Personnel and their contact information. So feel free to contact any of these uh, people, and you will get assistance with any questions that you have pertaining to growth. And then here's our Fort Worth district contact information. Myself, Deborah Wilson, and Mike Gassiot is our district growth coordinator. That's the end of my presentation, but we'll open it up now. If any of you have any questions, we'll be happy to entertain those questions. Mm -hmm. This is Cassidy Campbell speaking with the Council of Government, and um, as Deborah mentioned, we have an opportunity for answering some questions, and you won't be able to submit them verbally, but if you could please type your questions into the chat box, we will address as many as possible. And I also, this is Tom again, wanted to, I, I didn't get my name up on the slide, so I'm not going to make it into lights, but uh, my, my name's Thomas. I mean, you can send me anything. You have a question, you know, legal issues or other, because I work with Dallas and Fort Worth for one team. So I'm Thomas, just T-H-O-M-A-S dot J like and John dot Bloom, B-L-U-M, looks like Blum, at USPS dot gov. And you can always call my office anytime time at 214 252-6130 is my direct line, 6100 is the main line, but I'm always available to uh, help out any way I can with this issue. Okay, I'll go ahead and start. I'll read the first question and then let USPS personnel jump in as needed to answer. And the first question is, can you identify the level at which the USPS decisions will be made? Will the Dallas district make one decision or will local municipal postmasters make the decision for their community? So as, I, as I mentioned previously, under our, our regulation in the protocol, the district now makes these decisions. They're made essentially by the Dallas district in Capel, and they're also made by the Fort Worth district in Fort Worth. 
the postmasters are supposed to coordinate with the, the district delivery team and they make that decision uh, in that way. So there should be uniformity across the board. The postmasters used to have the authority under the old regulations to make these mode of delivery decisions, but that's been centralized just because of the, the growth and the volume of it all and to make sure that we have consistency in the application of process across the board for everybody. And the next question is, what will be the impact to existing developments? Will door-to-door -door delivery be changed to centralized? Who would install these new boxes? Well, what we're, what we're currently doing, as I mentioned before, where uh, we're, let's say there's a development out there now and they're through phase one's curbside, then we would ask them to move to central delivery. And sometimes, you know, we have to fill out, if, if there's one and a half phases done, we might have to fill that phase out with curbside or even go to two to a post in the other half of that. But then central delivery in the other phases of the development. For existing homes, we have a voluntary process. We encourage people, you know, 40% of the people in a community are willing to go forward and ask that they be changed from door to door to or curb, excuse me, from curbside delivery to centralized delivery. We will then meet with those folks in that, that community, that homeowners association, and work through that process. And there is a way to voluntarily switch over to centralized delivery. And while you know a lot of folks like their mailbox out on the front of their house net, we have had that down in the South Florida and Central Florida uh, districts come up a lot where uh, people actually wanted to change over to central delivery because, as mentioned before, the safety and security of the mail all day long while they're at work. Okay, the next question is, is there a plan or regulation to move established neighborhood single-family development to centralized delivery? I, I think I pretty well just just described that that's part of our policy, but there's no requirement for people to say, like I've been living in my home 10 years and development's 20 years old. There's no requirement, that, and we're not going to go up and tell people they have to change the centralized delivery, but that's available as an option if people want that. But our main focus here today and what we're trying to really get at is doing this in, in these new developments and doing it in the front end of the, the uh, sequencing and development so that the developers and builders can plan this stuff in so when people come out and buy their homes, that's what they understand they're buying a home and a community that has centralized delivery and all the new communities have centralized delivery. Okay, next question. What is the threshold for centralized delivery? Would a subdivision of one acre lots require centralized? 80 foot wide lots, the exception the exception process is understood, but what can be expected regarding the threshold? Right now, all the developments, one acre lots, or any of them, they're all going to centralize. I mean, that's the national policy and that's what we're working through. I mean, there could be a geographical you know, impediment to making that happen or some other unique situation. That's why we have an exceptions process and that's why we work with the builders and developers. But we don't have exceptions based on the size of the lot how wide it is, or big it is, or the density within a subdivision, we're moving all of them to centralized delivery. So there's uniformity across the board, and the folks that are living in, you know, $200,000 new homes and multi-use homes receive the same mail delivery. Somebody is a, a million-dollar home on an acre lot, and it's we have uniformity across the board in what we provide to the American public. Next question. How can we get the local USPS office to be more involved in addressing, especially on a larger scale than just each neighborhood? Well, I would recommend that you ask these folks today to come out and, and address these issues with you. And uh, we could have the postmaster be there, whoever, whatever staff in the district that uh, available for whatever you need. I mean, not just centralized delivery issues, but if you have postal issues in your community that you're concerned with that need to be addressed, just please let us know and we'll get the questions and the, the right people involved to solve the problem for you. Next question. Some area cities have weekly DRC meetings and numerous subdivisions being submitted. Is the USPS prepared from a staffing perspective to review all incoming subdivisions and provide timely feedback so as not to delay the development review? Yes, if those, if that's our big request today is that you get those tell those developers that they need to submit those master plans and plats to us, and we will turn them around quite quickly. 
I mean, we'll, and we'll work with you to make sure that happens. I mean, you know, we we appreciate that from the beginning to the end, the developers tell us it takes basically a year to get these subdivisions from breaking the ground to folks moving in, sometimes a year and a half. And we realize the, the uh, sequencing, you know, you have to have the, the, the subcontractors come in, laying the slabs, framing the houses, bricking them, the utilities have to go in. And we, want, we would never be an impediment, you know, or delay that. We're prepared. We have the staffing available. We're ready to move on this right away. Next question. In high growth areas, we've had issues connecting with local postmasters in the past. Are they being provided resources to meet the high growth demand? Yes, they are. Uh, this move to centralized deliveries is a major priority from the postmaster general down to the area vice president, the district managers, and down to the staff. So whatever we have to do to make this happen for you, to, get, to work with you as a partner to get central delivery approved for these master plans and plats before you approve them so that they already have a mode of delivery agreement in place and everybody's on the same page, we'll de dedicate whatever resources we need to to have that happen. Next question. Who files for an exception and when is that process considered? Well, it would, it, the, the builder developer can, can call the staff and ask for an exception if there's an exception. There's also, for individual existing homes, there's a process for hardship deliveries where somebody's, you know, totally incapacitated and they live by themselves. I mean, that's just kind of a separate issue. But on these new developments, if they believe, like I just said, that we had these situations, there's five phases and we got one phase in and they find out about this process, we meet with them and then we work something out. I mean, we, we're, we're reasonable with them. Sometimes we've gone two to a post. You know, sometimes we had some developments up in the colony where we went, we finished out uh, curbside delivery, single funeral homes for the rest of a, one part of development and the other part of development, second phase, we went into two to a post and then the rest of it, we did central delivery, and that kind of worked out for everybody. So it's just all kind of working into the process that's acceptable to the builder and developer as well as the municipalities and the counties. Next question. If cluster boxes are used, will this affect addressing, such as adding a box number? No, it will not. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, it's not going to affect addressing. Um, and our objective is to get the addresses into the national database uh, long before occupancy at these locations. Next question. What is quickly in USPS terms in regards to reviewing plats and plans? Cities are statutorily required to review and approve plans in certain time frames. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear the question right away, but as far as quickly, I mean, we can turn them around, we can meet, you can tell us what your time frame is and we'll meet your time frame. You know, I, I mean, it's not going to take us 30 days to review these things. You know, I'm thinking we could probably review them within a week. I mean, we sat down with builders before and we went over 11, 12 subdivisions and made agreements on them in, in a couple hours in one morning. So it's basically the... The, the biggest hurdle of all of this is just getting together in the meeting with people and have them lay out their master plats and plans, and then we have the discussions with them, and then before we leave the room, we've got signed agreements. So that's what we're, why we say we're available and ready and willing to come out and meet with folks. Next question. Can you require city review of centralized mailboxes prior to install installation? Cities may pass ordinances for decorative cluster boxes, parking requirements, shelters, et cetera. Um, what, what, what we've done before, we had down in Coral Gables, Florida, we had a situation where you had fill-in development, and what the postal regulations provide is like some of the areas like around Dallas-Fort Worth obviously have a lot of open area, and a densely populated place like South Florida down in Dade and Broward counties, we had a lot of fill-in developments where they'd replace a series of buildings on one street. Well, if the rest of the block on that street got curbside delivery or door delivery, we, we do, under our regulations, we give the same delivery that currently exists. As far as passing ordinances, they had an ordinance on there, but the ordinance, you know, really can't impede what the federal regulations are. 
uh, we don't we have a specific set of approved boxes and uh, materials so we would want to work with the city if you start talking about wanting to pass ordinances because city ordinance county ordinances and regulations can't supersede you know federal statutes as far as what we're required to do nationally and see that that's the challenge for us in working with you is what we're doing here we have to do in san francisco and miami you know up in michigan and up in maine so it's important that uh we have a kind of a uniformity nationally in what we do so when we talk about exceptions a lot of times we have to confer with with washington as far as what's possible so that's what i would ask like to meet with you about these issues Next question. If the placement and agreements are worked out between developers and the USPS, then what role do you see being filed, filled by municipal planning commissions, DRCs, or planning departments? Well, what, what, we, what role we would ask you to play, the planning commissions, that is, is to require that they come forward to the Postal Service seeking a mode of delivery before you, you approve their master plats and plans. What, what we'd like, what we've done now is when we've met with these developers and builders and reached these agreements, they're basically in, in communities, like I said, where there's inventory already in the system and there's builders out on the site and they're bricking out houses and some, a lot of them like maybe in a, a, like Valencia Cove, that had 823 homes and it had 110 uh, homes already constructed with boxes before we reached an agreement with them. We do that when we have to with existing inventory because they didn't know ahead of time. But the goal is to work with the planning commissions, cities, municipalities, excuse me, the same thing, but the counties, and have this all approved up front and for that to be the norm. Rather than working through the builders and developers, we really want to work through the municipalities and counties to have this part of your basically checklist for approval of master plats and plans. You know, you get your electric and water and gas approved, you have to get your mail delivery approved. Next question, how many lots in a new development area will trigger centralized delivery? A two lot subdivision, a three lot, four lot? Well, that would depend on where, what the location is. I, I will say this, what we're doing down in Miami-Dade area is, that everything, imagine this, everything's built out in the four corners and they got one little piece of land left and we're putting up, t the builder's putting up 10 houses. We centralize the delivery for those 10 homes and we put one central box in there. So it could be, you know, if, if the geography is there, that three homes would have a, a, a box for three deliveries. But then again, it might not be warranted based on the area. So we really have to look at each of the situations. But we are in fill-in developments, uh, even in areas with, that, that have curbside delivery surrounding it, we're approving, uh, we're approving centralized delivery for even places with 10 or 12 homes that, that are getting constructed. Next question. With a 30-day time frame to act on a plot, how can a municipality force a developer to meet with USPS within that time frame? If you, I don't believe, obviously I don't think you can force them, but I think if you provide those plats to the Postal Service before you approve them and right away that we'll make sure that we get back to them within your 30-day time frame and we communicate what we're doing with you. That's the whole thing about this is the notice and that's, that's the hurdle we have to get over. Once all the builders and developers understand that they're all gonna have centralized delivery approved and exceptions are gonna be rare, whether they're million and a half dollar homes or they're $200,000 multi-use homes, then I think that you know, it'll be a lot easier process. But you give us, if you get them on a Monday, you give them to us on a Tuesday, we'll turn that stuff around in 10 business days as far as an approval. We'll, we'll keep it well within the 30 days. We won't tie up your process. Next question. What kind of access is required to the centralized mailboxes, parking spaces, sidewalk, signage? You're creating an area of a neighborhood with increased pedestrian and vehicular activity that may cause a new conflict. Right, that, that's true, and, and the developers and builders are, are, are aware of under the Fair Housing Act, you know, the regulations as far as access like they do in anything else, like a community pool, a clubhouse about handicap access, and they will have to, that's why it's important to let them know up front, because they do have to make an allowance for not only the construction of the kiosk, and I'm thinking of one big pavilion maybe, like for a 1,200 home development, they also obviously have to put parking positions in there as well as signage. And, uh, 
they've been successfully doing that for, like I said, for 20 years in California and for probably 10 out in Colorado. And I know for the last four years, we've been doing successfully. I've been working with builders down in uh, South Florida. So once they know what the requirements are, you know, they, they don't have a, the, the handicap accessibility, the signage, the parking, and the land, it's, it's not a problem. Most of them have come and told me that it's not a problem if we know that this is required up front. The problem comes is when I already have these houses, you know, 100 homes sold in the 400 home development, then you tell me, and I've got, I'm putting boxes up front. That's when it's a problem for the developer and builder. That, that's why we want to get out in front of it, and then it won't be a problem. Next question. Who is responsible for the maintenance of these central mailboxes? Well, what happens in that case is the homeowners association is. The developers in that usually go in and they, they, they've created a legal document where the homeowners association is created. And part of the homeowners association's creation includes usually the, uh, the responsibility for the maintenance and upkeep, just as it would be for the swimming pool or anywhere else. The homeowners association has responsibility for that. If, if, there, if there isn't a homeowners association, then we usually work out an agreement with the existing homeowners to, to do that. We haven't had a problem with that. Next question. Um, so an agreement of some sort will be required to secure centralized mail delivery. So every plot will essentially require an agreement before they are approved. That, that's correct. That's our goal. You know, that, that way, see, well, the, problem, the other problem we face, uh, Don, we've had it go ongoing is this. A lot of these developers come and go. They sell off homes to builders. Builders sell off portions of what they originally bought to somebody else. The people come and go in their construction sites, the on-site managers and ever. So the question becomes, you know, we have people come in, well, I didn't know, I didn't know this, I didn't know that. And so to eliminate any confusion, we have a specific document that we sign, and when you send us the plat, we'll contact, meet with the builder, we'll prove the mode of delivery, and we'll sign off with the builder developer on the document and give you a copy of it so that we have, a, we have all that down. Next question. Uh, we have heard about some subdivisions that have central delivery that are having their residential mail picked up from the cluster boxes and delivered to each home. Any idea how this works? What we have had in some situations, and once again, this is down in Florida because of, that's where the growth was before 2008 is, that we have had situations where we've made single point deliveries to like a clubhouse in a subdivision or even to a cluster box. And the folks that, and within the homeowners association elected to pay for to have a deliver person, people come in and make deliveries. We have that here, I think, up in Collin County, one place where we've been asked to deliver mail to specific mail room with several hundred homes or a thousand homes in it, and they have a private courier service come in and they pay for that to deliver to the specific homes because they want it done at a certain time in a certain manner. So, yeah, I mean, that happens. That's, that's not unheard of. Who will control the keys to each of the boxes? How will new homeowners get these keys? What if they lose a key? Who do they need to go to? The, 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 the keys are basically provided to the, to the homeowners uh, whenever they get them. The lost keys, you know, you have to work with the local delivery folks in it. But I'll get you a more thorough answer that I'm not, I'm, as a law guy, I'm not real familiar with the key situation, but I know they usually go out and meet and the, the developer has the keys originally and the developer usually provides them to the homeowners. And then when there's lost keys, that I'm not sure of, so I, I can't answer that one. But I'll find that answer for you. It looks like those are all the questions that we've received so far. So thank you again for joining us this morning, and thank you to the USPS for making this presentation and providing us with this information. Um, this webinar will be posted at nctcog.org slash envir. And we do have a couple of survey questions for you to answer regarding this webinar. And this concludes our webinar. Thank you from the Postal Service for your time. We appreciate it.